Hey friend, Wagwan, welcome back to my channel. Now, if you are new to the channel, my name is Carrie Ann, and I'm so happy you stopped in. Now, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe right now and hit that notification bell so you are always first to be notified when I upload a new recipe. Now, for today's recipe, we are gonna be cooking up a delicious pot of curry goat, and it's all gonna come together in the oven. Yes, it's gonna be just as flavorful. Yes, it's gonna be just as delicious. And of course, the gravy is gonna be rich and thick and luscious, just like when we do it on the stove top. Of course, if you're looking for a more traditional way of cooking the Jamaican curry goat, I do have a recipe that's live on my YouTube channel, and I will link it in the high card for you if you wanna check it out. Now, this is my version of the Jamaican curry goat, deliciously cooked in the oven, and I hope you like it. So our first order of business is to trim up and clean up our meat, remove any um, excess fat or anything that you don't wish to consume. After you finish trimming up your meat, the next thing you want to do is to cut them up into one inch bite sized pieces. I think one to two inches is usually ideal. Now friends, I am not going to lie to you, minaga lie, the bones are hard as hell, they are hard to cut. So I save the cutting up for the butcher shop. I usually buy all my goat meat at the butcher. That way I can pick out the exact piece that I want and I can watch them, I can see them cutting it up right in front of my eyes. I never buy goat meat from the grocery store because you don't know what you're getting. A pea pot in at a container, you open it and a pea rubbish. All you wanna do is roll your eyes and suck your teeth. So save yourself the aggravation, go to the butcher shop, pick out your piece of goat meat and have them chop it up for you. Now I know the next step can be a bit controversial, but I'm Caribbean, I'm in a business, this is what I do, this is how it always goes down in my kitchen. I'm gonna rinse my meat. Now I'm gonna be using some distilled vinegar and water to rinse my goat meat. You can use lemon juice or lime juice, it doesn't have to be fresh lemon or lime juice. And I usually have my goat meat sitting in the mixture for about 30 seconds, then I give it a nice quick rinse, and you wanna rinse it at least twice under some running water, and then you wanna drain it. So once you're finished draining it, you wanna bring it back to your work area, you wanna grab some clean paper towel, and you wanna patch your meat dry because we are getting it ready for marination. So now we are ready to start building our marinade because flavor is everything. So the first thing I'm going in with is my custom seasoned blend, and most of you already know this is my holy grail of seasoning, it's my own custom blend. And of course I have a tutorial of exactly what is in this on my YouTube channel. I will link it in the iCards, um, you can check it out if you're interested. The custom seasoned blend is going to add another layer of flavor into our goat meat. Um, it's going to be so, so good. So next I'm going in with my Jamaican curry powder. I'm gonna be adding one tablespoon now and then I'm gonna be saving the other one for later. Now, I always combine um, turmeric with my curry when I'm cooking a curry dish because I like my curry to be nice and vibrant in the end. Sometimes when you cook curry, it can come out a bit dark and I don't like that, it's not my thing. So over the years, I've combined it with turmeric. Now, turmeric is in curry. It is responsible for giving it that yellow color that we associated with Jamaican curry and or the yellow curry. But I like to add an additional turmeric because it adds that vibrancy that I like. Now, turmeric on its whole has its whole health benefits. It is anti-inflammatory among other things. Um, feel free to Google all the health benefits. And of course, in this recipe, turmeric is optional. So next I am going in with my all-purpose powder and I'm gonna add some onion powder and some garlic powder as well because these are gonna add tons of flavor to our curry goat. I am also gonna be throwing in a few dry bay leaves and I'm gonna add some salt. Now if you are using onion salt and garlic salt then you definitely wanna skip adding additional salt because health is well and we definitely wanna watch our salt intake. I'm also gonna be adding some fresh black pepper and I'm gonna be adding some crushed pimento seeds or pimento berries. Now if you know anything about Caribbean cooking, you know pimento seeds is a must. We don't cook without it. Now I'm using a mortar and pestle to um, crush my pimento seeds, but it's absolutely not necessary. You can use the bottom of a heavy cup or even the handle or the blade of a knife. Um, just apply a little bit of pressure and it will crush the pimento seeds for you. So 
So now that we have our powdered seasoning in our bowl, we're gonna go in with some fresh seasoning as well. So I'm gonna be adding some chopped garlic, and I'm also gonna be adding some crushed ginger. Now for some people, um, curry can be a little bit irritating to their stomach, so you always wanna pair it with the ginger because ginger does aid in digestion. I'm also gonna be going in with some green onion or scallions, depending on where you're from. And we're gonna be adding half of our scallions now and we're gonna save the rest for later. And we're gonna do the same with our onions and our thyme. We're gonna divide it up and add half now and save the rest for later. So now that we have all our seasoning in, we are gonna to top things off with some vegetable oil. And this is gonna help us work that seasoning into the meat. So now that we have built our marinade, it's time to combine it with our meat. Now I throw on a pair of gloves because turmeric and curry, they do stain your fingernails and it takes a little while to get it off. I don't like it. So I always, whenever I'm working with curry or turmeric, you'll see me um, put on some gloves. Now you can also use your bare hands, remember it will get stained, or you can also use your cooking spoon or you can use your tongue, but I do find that using your fingers to Combine the marinade to the meat is the best method because it really gets the job done Now this is a very important step So you want to make sure that you are massaging that Seasoning that marinade into your meat. You want to make sure that every piece of goat meat is completely covered with your marinade now let's talk about scotch bonnet for a little bit. Now, I love to cook with whole scotch bonnet. I cannot handle the heat of the slices, except when it's in a patty or it's something jerk. I can't explain it, um, but I'm okay with it. This is where we are. So what I do, I always cook with the whole scotch bonnet because when I tell you that skin has so much flavor in it, you're gonna smell it and you're gonna taste it in the meat without the heat. I love that. But sometimes I want a little bit of something. So the way for me to control that, I use the powdered scotch bonnet pepper. So I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit on that right now. And then I will use the whole scotch bonnet later on when I start cooking. Now, if you're someone who absolutely loves the heat from the pepper, go ahead and add your slices. You will add it um, before you add the oil. That way you can massage and combine everything together. Make sense? All right, we're moving on. So now once you finish working your marinade into your meat, you wanna cover it with something airtight and allow this to sit in the refrigerator for overnight. The longer it sits in this marinade, the more flavorful your curry goat is gonna be. But 24 hours is best, but at least four hours. At least four hours. Um, before cooking time. So now we're ready to cook. So the first thing you want to do is to preheat your oven to 325 degrees. And you want to also set some water to boil and set that aside. We're going to need that in a few minutes. Now you also want to take your meat from the refrigerator and allow it to sit out for about 30 minutes so it can get down to room temperature. What this is going to do, it's going to allow for even cooking. You almost never want to cook cold meat unless the recipe specifically asks you to do that. Once you're finished all that, it is time to add our vegetable oil to our pot. Now, you need a heavy bottom pot for this. I am using my cast iron pot. You can use your, Dutch, your Jamaican Dutch pot because you already know it was built for this life. Or you want something that's not only heavy bottom, but it has to be oven safe because we are going to be cooking our curry goat in the oven. So we are going to heat up our oil over medium heat and of course I'm going to use my, my chopstick hack to let me know when my oil is ready. So I'm just going to insert that in the center of the pot and once I see those tiny bubbles at the base, I know my oil is ready to go. So now that our oil is ready, we're going to go ahead and add our onion, our green onion and our fresh thyme to the pot. We want to sweat these down, we want our onions to get nice and translucent, and we want all our seasoning to open up and release all those delicious flavor into our oil. We're going to allow these to sweat down for about two to three minutes. So now that our seasoning is ready, we're going to go ahead and add our remaining curry, and we're going to toast this up for about two minutes, and we're going to be doing the same thing with our curry. We want um, it to heat up and release all those delicious flavor into the oil before we add our goat meat. 
Now, once the two minute has passed, and I know the curry is filling your kitchen right now, go ahead and increase the heat to medium high for about a minute, and then we're gonna go ahead and add our meat. So we wanna sear these off for about three to four minutes, and we wanna leave it uncovered, and we'll sear them on both sides. So you wanna stir periodically as well. Once the four minutes have passed, go ahead and add your boiling water. Now, if you're using the whole peppers like I'm doing, go ahead and add them now, and then we're gonna cover our pot and allow this to come to a boil. So now I forgot to tell you earlier not to rinse out the bowl that you had the marinade in, that you had your meat marinated in, because there's a lot of flavor still sitting in there. So what we're gonna do, if it's a heat safe bowl, go ahead and pour your boiling water in there, Swish it around a little bit just to get all the bits that's sitting in the bowl, and then you can pour it in the pot. If it's not a heat safe bowl, just add a little bit of water to it and swish it around and pour it in. If not, pour the water directly into the pot. I'm gonna share a little hack with you that I do um, to keep the house from smelling like food even days after cooking. Before I start cooking, I put a small pot of water on the stove and I put some cinnamon powder in there. You can add some other stuff. Um, you can add some cloves, some orange peel, but really all you need is cinnamon because cinnamon works like baking powder. It absorbs odor. So you wanna bring that to a boil and then you wanna turn the pot down and allow that to simmer throughout the entire cooking process. Now you wanna keep an eye on it because if you're using a small pot, the water will dry out and your pot will burn. So you can top it up. You can add additional water as, as you go along. So that's my little hack, and then the house is gonna smell just like cinnamon, it smells great. And when you're finished cooking, or even the next day, you won't, your house will not smell like you were cooking curry. Or frying fish, it works for both. We have everything that we need right now in our pot, so we're gonna go ahead and cover this up, and allow everything to come to a boil, and then we're gonna transfer it to the oven. So now we are gonna put the pot with our curry goat and the lid in the oven. And we're gonna cook this low and slow on 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna allow this to cook for 90 minutes. Now we're gonna be cooking in increments, so go ahead and set your timer. Now we're gonna cook this for 90 minutes, but we're gonna break that up into increments of 45 minutes. Because I don't want you to just stick it in the oven and forget about it. So at the 45 minutes increment, I want you to go in and check your curry goat to make sure that you have enough liquid in there to continue to cook your meat. You want it to have enough liquid where you're seeing the top of the meat, but you don't want the meat to be completely submerged in water because we are not cooking soup. Now we're at that 90 minutes checkpoint. Now the curry goat can take anywhere from two hours to two and a half hours. It's gonna depend on um, the temperature it's been cooked at and of course the, the age of the goat meat. And at this point, we are gonna remove the peppers because I don't want them to burst. You are more than welcome to leave yours in, but I'm gonna remove mine. I'm also gonna be removing those wooden bits of thyme because we already extracted all the flavoring that we need from the thyme and nobody eats the wooden bits, so we're gonna remove those and discard them. We're gonna add our carrots as well, and we're also gonna go in with some potatoes. Now, not everybody likes potatoes in their curry goat. Um, it varies for me, but for today's recipe, we're gonna add it in. So we're gonna add both carrots and potatoes. Now, if you're gonna prep your potatoes beforehand, go ahead and add and place them in a container with some cold water, because this is gonna slow down the oxidation um, process on the potatoes. It's gonna prevent your potatoes from going black. So I'm also gonna add some butter, right? Because butter is gonna add tons of flavor. And we're gonna test our curry goat for tenderness as well. Um, I know it's not ready, but we also want to test your meat to see where you are. So as you can see, our curry goat is starting to soften up, but we want it to get to um, a level of where it's pork tender, and we're not there yet. So we're going to cover this up again and place it back in the oven and allow everything to cook for another 30 minutes. So go ahead and set your timer again. Okay, friends, we are at that 30 minute mark and we're gonna go ahead and check on our curry goat once more. And we're gonna be checking for tenderness, um, liquid level, as well as the tenderness of our carrots and potatoes. So I know my carrots and my potatoes are cooked all the way through, they're nice and tender. So now we're gonna take a sampling of our curry goat and check the tenderness. 
and as you can see it is for tender so this is perfect so my next step is to taste my gravy and make sure that it's seasoned to perfection so I'm gonna add a little bit more um, all-purpose seasoning and the ancestors did speak to me and tell me to add some black pepper so we're gonna go in with some black pepper as well then we're gonna place everything back in the oven for an additional 10 minutes and then we should be good to go now before we place this back in the oven we're going to make sure that we check our gravy because at this point it should be nice and thick and luscious because nobody likes a runny watery gravy we're going to go ahead and repeat those so the reason i added the potatoes is because it also acts as a thickening agent so it's going to help you to achieve that thick gravy so we're gonna pop this back into the oven for an additional 10 minutes. So go ahead and set that timer. And once the 10 minutes has passed, we're gonna remove it from the oven and we're gonna turn off the oven. So now we've arrived at that 10 minute mark, go ahead and remove your goat meat from the oven. And you smell that? That smells incredible. It smells so yummy. Um, go ahead and stir things up. Make sure everything is nicely incorporated and your your gravy is nice and consistent throughout look how luscious that gravy is it's nice and thick and rich exactly how we want it my goat meat is done at this point it is nice and fork tender the gravy is nice and thick and luscious just the way i want it um if it is not as tender as you would like it to be go ahead and pop it back in the oven and give it a little bit more time because the cooking time will vary depending on the age of the meat and of course the oven now I'm gonna serve this up over some rice and peas um, it is traditionally served with rice and peas or white rice um, in Trinidad it is mostly served with roti which is absolutely delicious you cannot go wrong you can pair your curry goat with whatever side dish you like as always friends i want to thank you for tuning in and hanging out with me today and i hope you will give this recipe a try as well as tag me in your recreation now if you still have not subscribed to my channel i do invite you to subscribe right now and hit that notification bell as always one love and stay blessed my friends